What's up guys, it's Shana and welcome to another episode of the Eheng Podcast And today we will answer a question from N A P Anap I think it's Anup. Hello boss, following your YouTube channel since March 2020, MCO time, and currently finishing my first investment unit using Makeover Guys service for my unit in JB, and next second unit in Kota Kinabalu. Coming soon, please give the promo code under yours to get the special price for the unit in Sabah. By the way, seeking your expert views. Number one, Recently splashed out almost 50000 for my first unit in JB for 10 years old two-story landed house. Should I continue to do the same for my second unit in Sabah as bought both units before I knew that landed units are not high on rental yield? For your information, the unit was bought at 678000 back in 2020 with current possible price to sell at 720000 which is not worth to flip, therefore renting out at 2000 plus is possible, but with condition that it has to be fully furnished. What is the budget to furnish a two-story landed unit? Is there any cap or calculation to it purely to rent out? Number two, trust you have heard of step-up financing to pay the interest portion of the mortgage loan. Thinking of refinancing the Sabah unit to this loan, what are the pros and cons? I think the keys this month with no lock-in period, should I explore as... I have to start paying 2007 a month with normal loan instead of potential 1007 a month only for the interest. Number three, slightly out of topic but related to property as well. I am having a six and a half years left car loan of 68,000 with 3.1% interest and able to put up a similar budget to furnish a Sabah unit. So as I am having tight budget, should I A, take out the money to pay my car lump sum to save interest of 14,000 over six and a half years and use the EPP to pay makeover guys for 24 months or B, continue paying the car loan for the next six and a half years and use the fund available to pay a lump sum to makeover guys. What do you think about it? Finally, please continue to share your valuable knowledge about property, especially for the younger generations and not to forget old generations like me. Ha ha ha. Wish you healthy as always and be able to give us more advice on property investment journey. Do let us know if you plan to drop by Kota Kinabalu so that I can bring you to my unit furnished by the makeover guys soon. Regards, Anap. So thank you very much for the email all the way from Kota Kinabalu. Let's go right into it. Context, bought two properties, one in Kota Kinabalu, one in JB. The one in JB is like 10 years old already and he just spent 50000 on furnishing the unit. And you come to think of it, it's 50000 very expensive um, for a studio unit, maybe lah, right? For a studio unit, maybe you can do it in like thirty-eight thousand, provided the kitchen and aircons are provided. But if it's for a landed terrace house, I think it's fine. Also depends on to what extent that you are furnishing the unit. A lot of people don't get it when the size of the unit increases, the budget for the makeover or renovation should also increase. Just because there's just more area to cover. On a smaller apartment, you can have a two-seater settle. Then a dining, a square table settle. But in a terrace house, you cannot do that. Your dining table must be a bigger table, at least a six-seater. If your living space is huge, you must have the right furniture size to match with it. And I still remember back then when I got my semi-D just to furnish like kitchen cabinets, wardrobe, aircon, water heater, fan, lights, curtain. It was already 28 to 35,000. Yeah, and we, I don't see any furnitures yet. That's insane. And that's just something very important to bring out here. Lah. So that's for the JB unit. The Saba unit uh, bought at 678000 selling at 720 So don't think like selling. So renting it out at 2000 provided fully furnished. If you think about it like immediately, I will think about the monthly repayment. So here he says that it's 2007 per month for his normal loan. Therefore, is it a great idea to use this step-up financing that was introduced lately? La? So now because of the OPR rise, a lot of people worry about the money installments increasing. Then the question here is since there is no lock-in period, which means whenever you buy property, the loan, right? Within the loan agreement itself, they will actually state in a lock-in period. If you breach, meaning you transfer or sell the property or you cancel the loan or you switch banks, right? there'll be a penalty that you will need to pay. And certain loans don't have this clause, which is great. So now he got this property, which every month now is paying 2007. Then should he go for a step up financing where I think it's provided by CIMB and Maybank only. Lah. Maybe Affin Bank as well. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure, but the two big boys will be providing it. It gives an alternative where the first five years of the loan period, you only need to pay for interest. For those who again don't understand, when you never you pay an installment amount, let's say 2007, right? It consists of interest 
and principal. So the calculation of interest is a percentage of the amount we owe the bank at that particular moment of time. But then the principal is that total amount. Every time when we pay interest, right? so after five years, eight years, right? you look into your bank statement, right? The principal merely drop one because the first five to eight years, right? Majority of them are for interest. So since this is the thing, the banks are now giving this option of paying only interest. So as a result, you have a lower commitment amount for the first five years. But then in Arnab's case, is it sensible? So that depends on your ambition. There's also one thing that he brought up. He bought two landed properties here, not knowing that they are poor cash flow properties. Like there's a reason why I always buy high rise because it makes sense in terms of cash flow. The possibility of finding an apartment where the renter can cover the installment is way higher than getting a landed property where the renter can cover the installment just because the landed property price is too high. Just like most of the properties in Penang, the selling price are just too high but the rental cannot catch up. If you're playing the same game like me, Anup, where I'm going to hold it for the next 30 years, then I think you should take up the refinancing where the rental now can somewhat cover the first five years. So hoping that five years later, there will be certain elements of capital appreciation as well as the increase in rental. Just to put into a timeline, right? Now, if you don't take up the financing, it will be 2007 and every month you need to cough out 700 for the property. So five years later, you will still pay somewhat the same amount and rental is still going to be the same just that you will have some capital appreciation and the equity built within the account, it will be more la, because you paid a little bit more on principal. But the second case is now every month you have a surplus of 300 and five years later, now you start paying the installment which is going to be like let's say 2007 and let's assume the same capital appreciation and the same rental increase you will still enjoy the benefits of it because the cash flow is way loose compared to the first deal also that's very important if you are very comfortable with loans like a lot of people do not understand what's a good debt what's a bad debt so aren't all that the same An example of bad debts are personal loans credit cards actually those they just tortures the credit card during their vacation and they just swipe every damn thing right yeah, like at that moment, you will enjoy life like nobody's business. It's once in a lifetime, but every year you go, I don't understand still. Then they come back with that bulk of loan. Then they cannot settle the credit card. They use the zero transfer. Then they pay minimum every month. It's going to be a disaster. And like, I think the newspaper actually put out the figures where a lot of people within 30 to 40 years old are bankrupt because of personal loan and credit card debts. But a lot of headline readers, everybody just tell, hey, yo, Sean, you know debts are not very good. If you use these kind of debts, which are indirectly financial services to build your wealth, why not, right? So in this case, you are using a brand new form of financing. So now every month, instead of paying 700 to the bank, now you collect 300 back. Still having the ownership on your side for the property. So now who's building up the equity? the tenant is building up the equity on your behalf. For me, I would take it because I will hold it long term. In other words, if I were to have one property that gives me 300 a month, right? What's the fear of having three or five or 10 of them? Because the more I have, the more cash flow I will generate. The only risk is if all of them suddenly are in the same location or within the same building, then suddenly some unfortunate event happened, then that's too bad. So that's when diversification needs to be in place. But you guys get the point, right? So when a property is positive cash flow, right? What's so fearful about that when it's building me cash flow? Then the next question is about the budget to furnish a two-story landed unit. Is there a cap? No. Uh, but if it's for investment, I will go look around the property portals and look at other people's condition. Like fully furnished, like what's the definition of fully furnished? And today there's no standard definition of it. But to me, it's the kitchen must be functional. Of course, there's a kitchen cabinet. There's like basic living stuff like furnitures, tables, sofa, fan, light, curtains, water heater, wardrobe space, bed, basic grills for landed properties. And that's about it. So anything additional such as TV, washing machine, air condition, and expansion, if you have 30,000, use 30,000 to furnish everything on basic first. So it's best that I spend 6,000 on three items. For example, a very basic dining table, 
plus the fan plus the curtain rather than a 6,000 sofa. So aim for completion of the space rather than perfection of an element within the house. I can do up 15,000 worth of curtain but the bedroom's got no bed when you got tea lamp only. Then it doesn't defeat. I don't care whether it's this curtain 15,000 or not because it's not for your own stay. I'd rather you have a 15,000 room instead of an element. And for the budget-wise, in East Malaysia, things are slightly higher because there's no IKEA there. <laughs> and, and I've been there before, things are really more expensive there. La. So pity you guys. La. Then for the car loan, uh, Anab here has six and a half years left for the car loan with 68,000 and a 3.1% interest. So is it wise to pay off the 68,000 one lump sum just to save the interest of 14,000 over six and a half years? Then use makeover guys EPP for the next 24 months. To me, it depends on two things. Number one, is it a fixed rate for your car loan? Because higher purchase loans are calculated differently. It means the interest is already tabulated. So let's say, just for ease of calculation, 100,000 car, right? And the interest is 3% for 9 years. So when you buy the car, it's 9 times 3%, which is 27% of the amount, which is 127,000. And that will be the cost of the car plus financing. Then 127 will be divided by 108 months, which is nine times 12. So you divide over 108 payments. Then per month, you need to pay around 1,000 plus. So that's how you tabulate. It means the interest is already tabulated in. Even if you settle early, the interest is already calculated in unless you took the one that is very similar to housing loan, interest is derived from the outstanding amount every day. Then it's a whole different thing. Then only your theory will work by settling 68,000 straight up, then save on the interest. So you take the zero interest installment plan by makeover guys to furnish the property. Then that makes sense. So please check with the bank on the structure of your higher purchase loan. Well, if it's that fixed amount by the bank, so it means the interest is already tabulated in too bad. I would suggest to just continue paying every month, lah, right? Since the interest is already calculated, might as well just pay every month and enjoy the long-term facility, but still go for the zero interest, easy payment plan by the makeover guys. So on hand, you will always have cash because in this uncertain time right now, anything can happen. Maybe another lockdown, leh, another war. Leh. Uncertainties now are just way too high and it depends on your confidence and your level of security. Are you okay with not having cash on you at all? If there's any emergency, can you resolve it immediately? So that depends. Uh. So some people would always prefer to have cash. Although I have 100,000 in the bank account, I will still take easy payment plan. Right? Why should I settle early when there's no benefit at all? Unless if I settle early, then there's like 10% discount or whatsoever. Then okay, then it means that I save 10% upfront. If not, I will just drag the payment. I will slowly pay you month by month. Just in case I come across any opportunities or there's any emergency, I can still have cash on hand and pay for them. Well, this is a very dangerous statement as well because a lot of people choose easy payment plan for things that they don't need, then with the cash on hand, they still think that they are rich. So they can go shop for more silly stuff, which is bad. So this is about mind control, self-control on spending. And I guess since you have followed a lot on the channel, I think you are fine. Well, I hope, but that's me. Just because I have a family right now, I have people who are dependent on me. Therefore, it's always good to have certain amount of cash on hand. And I'm pretty confident in myself on budgeting and spending control. Just because I will use EPP to pay off this one, doesn't mean that I will use this remaining money to buy new stuff. Yeah, that's me. So in conclusion, for those who are looking to do makeovers, right? I actually have a promo code, Sean Tan Makeover 22. Sean Tan Makeover 22. So whenever you make an inquiry with the makeover guys, you can just tell them this promo code. They will know what to do with it. They will give you that instant cash rebate and some extra privileges of services. Then for your Kota Kinabalu house, uh, in terms of the budget for your renovation, I think it's entirely up to you. But always aim for the completion of the unit. Do take out the emotional attachment of having it as an own stay because sometimes when we go into a house, hey, the kitchen like that cannot own. Personally, I can. I won't live in such a unit. But other people will. So do always prioritize completeness of the unit rather than perfection of an element and based on whatever I understand from your email you're going to hold the property for long term so the goal is to use minimal amount to have ownership so setup financing may sound like a good thing to you the first five years just pay only interest but for the outstanding amount that you can save right 
do put it somewhere else, do not spend it. And that applies to your higher purchase loan as well. So if it's fixed, then just continue with the loan and take the EPP. If it's flexible and the insurance is tabulated daily, then if you have the amount to resolve it, then resolve it. But it depends on your confidence level, on how comfortable are you without having cash. And all this revolves around financial literacy. If you're very well informed right now, OPR hikes are not that scary and inflation is not that scary if you have properties under your name. So all these credit lines, bank facilities and whatsoever, within the same tool, you can use it to build wealth or you can put yourself through hell. So for those who still have any questions regarding real estate, do just email me at T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G at gmail.com or you can just DM me on Instagram I-H-E-R-N-G about going to KKI. I'm interested just that Maybe I will plan a two or three days trip to see like some properties there, but I have no idea yet. But it's very exciting. So for those who are in Kota Kinabalu, for developers who wants to invite me to check out their properties, right? Do hit me up or you have friends within the property developers there, do hit me up. I am open to go and see because everybody tells me KK properties are very, 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 very expensive. I know, but I want to see. <laughs> and with that, thanks guys. See you guys on the next one. Ciao.